Welcome to Bass Touring with Daisy. On this bass tour, the builder, at Alia, will be with us talking about some of the neat things she's done here. Hello, I'm Alia, and this is Granny Victoria's Tea Room. It's located in Founders Falls, which is the fancier part of town. The base code is Tea Time 17990, and that's on Everlasting. What drew me to this base was how well done it was and all the details. It's super hard to do the gingerbread trim that Victorian houses are famous for, but Alia has done well adding these details as gingerbread on the house exterior. That, together with the color, the gable, the columns, and the flowers, all help to establish this as a Victorian house. The decorative details especially set this build apart. They're not even all that difficult to do. They just haven't been done before. At least not like this. It's a fully functional base. Out here, I flipped an arcane enhancement holder upside down and put it under the bus stop. And of course, the teleporters to all zones are in the tunnels at either side. I'll be pointing out the other utility items I have tucked away in various places throughout the base. They're all neatly hidden away. I hadn't even realized it was a fully functioning base in addition to being an RP-friendly base because she's hidden the utilities so very well. One more thing for me to love. Oh, and a really fun detail out here is the adorable teacup up on the gable, complete with steam. I thought it would be really nice to have something fancy and kind of cute in the game. We have a lot of clubs, tech spots, arcane things, outdoor areas, and some grunge, but nothing quite like this really existed at the time. Just a nice, quiet, beautiful spot where you could go to RP. And I wanted to make something architectural too, so this fit into all of that nicely. I remember when I first walked into this room, the decor immediately won me over. I was excited to see the wallpaper. I'd never seen anyone do wallpaper in a base before. And our wall options are typically pretty boring, so it was awesome to see someone doing something like this, and it is actually easy to do. The colored stripe is added with alphabet letters. The pattern colored walls are of course banners. And the black pattern is actually a fence from the dividers tab. Really creative use of pieces. This base was inspired by the beautiful old Victorian homes in my area that I grew up admiring and is loosely based on one in particular that had been converted into a tea house and restaurant. They would host things like birthday parties and it was a popular date spot. I took a lot of my decor from things they had in their tea house. So you see the Victorian wallpaper and the little bookshelf there on the wall. They had books that told the history of the place and sold things like tea and other little knickknacks. So I put in a little gift shop as well, just some little things to help bring in some extra income. This area would be, of course, the main tea room, where one would be served tea or coffee, plus whatever you had ordered, which usually could be anything from a fancy sandwich to a lovely tiered tray of delicacies. The counter up front shows some things that might be included, such as macarons, or small cakes and pastries. The gift shop displays some of the mugs you might expect to see your tea or coffee served in. I actually have salvage storage hidden under the counter here and I had a crafting table in the hostess stand over there. Here in the kitchen, there's an area set aside for rolling up silverware the way that you would in a restaurant. And just like with any busy restaurant, there are dirty dishes in the sink and food being prepared, in this case cookies, and the oven hides a merit vendor. I love the china on display here and notice the mugs that you saw in the gift shop are here ready to be used. Above the kitchen doorway, you'll see an example of the transom windows that I put in. During the Victorian era, when houses like this were built, to get needed ventilation, they would put windows above the doors. The bar on the side would allow you to open the window, even if the door itself needed to be closed. I tried to include as many historically accurate details as I could, such as these windows and the narrow doorways as well. The pink room here isn't so much for tea parties as it is for a quiet afternoon or evening of lounging comfortably, perhaps sipping tea in front of the fire, or reading a book while curled up in a chair with a cup of your favorite tea. On the other side of the house is the green room, complete with the piano. Whenever you see a piano in a base, it was created by the builder. There are no pianos in the editor. 
This room adds a classical elegance to the ambiance here. Heading out back, there is even more to delight. Before going out the door, I'm just going to note that there is a quartermaster and a trainer hidden in the restroom doors. While I was building this, I spent a lot of time with reference images of actual Victorian homes and gardens so that I could make things look as authentic as possible. That's why the garden is shaped this way and I have these funny little topiaries. They're weird, they're cute, and I think they're delightful. There's a resurrection circle in the garden and an Ouroboros crystal in the fountain. I absolutely fell in love with the gardens, but especially the topiaries when I first saw this place. The house was impressive enough. I did not expect a full garden as well. And the topiaries are so cute. That little teacup is just perfect. Heading upstairs, the bedrooms are, again, traditionally Victorian, with appropriate wall decor and furniture. More details here show that the builder paid such close attention to authenticity. This bedroom doesn't have a closet. Instead, there's a wardrobe, just as a Victorian room would have. And I love the stripes on the wall, which are very thematic. Let's check out this bathroom. The builder has created a Victorian gravity toilet and a clawfoot tub. Very cool. Naturally, the tailors are in the, all of the closets, but those are the only utilities upstairs. The layout perfectly matches the downstairs, with this room being directly behind the gable with the teacup out front, even though this part of the base is not physically located over the first floor of the house. Here is the larger bedroom. Again, the attention to detail is marvelous. There's even trash in the trash can by the desk where Granny Victoria takes care of her business paperwork. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of a beautiful little base. From the imaginative additions that bring the architecture alive to the accurate rendering of many authentic details, this base is not only skillfully built, but a treat to visit. Even the clever map is full of imaginative detail. I'm glad you came along to see this. Thanks for watching.